holidaying here in Britain, of course, has never been more popular. The award-winning comedian Russell Kane has decided to join forces with his 69-year-old aunt to explore the good, the bad and the ugly side of holidays in the UK for his brand-new podcast. And I'm delighted to say, as you saw before, Russell joins us now. I, I love this because <laughs> for a whole generation of youngsters, the idea that, um, you know, holiday staycationing is something new, it, is, it feels like, oh, it's not a holiday unless it's in the sunshine on a fly and flop, isn't it? Whereas I grew up, we had holidays in Wales and Cornwall and we loved them and it, it wasn't unusual and I love the fact that you're going back and looking at how it was uh, for a whole new generation of people that really, you know, should have been doing it all along. Yeah, I mean, as soon as Next Space asked me to get involved, I already was annoyed about this phrase, staycation. Yeah. To me, it needs to be abolished. If you're going out of your house, you're packing suitcases, you're going somewhere, you're eating ice cream, you're looking at uh, buildings, you're just on vacation or holiday, ideally, as we're not in America yet. So there's no such thing as a staycation. If you're just staying in your own house and going to museums, then you're just not on holiday. So you're either on vacation or you're not. And there's brilliant stuff in this country. Like, and people forget how recent it is. I was 12 before I got on an aeroplane. It's a very recent thing that we have to be sort of bathed in sunshine and smashing Sambuca while Wayne Lineker's dancing in order for it to be a holiday. <laughs> You know, I went to Devon and also people, I know people will be watching this going, oh, it's all very well for you. You know, it's a thousand pounds a night just to go to York at the moment. Exactly. Get the thinking cap on. There are so many undiscovered cities in this country. Yeah, Last yeah. year, we went for seven nights to Lancaster. Now there's castles there, historic buildings, shops, amazing restaurants. That's the same for dozens and dozens of cities that do not get visited. So look, think of the initial city, all oh, that doesn't make sense, and go and have a poke around online, see go what's there. And... Well, that's very true, actually. Uh, on my radio that, show, we, we often um, give away holidays to cities that you might think, hmm. But then, of course, what you realise is that very often those cities, A, are fantastic in themselves, but also they are slap back in the middle of spectacular countryside, which Absolutely, takes 10 yeah. minutes to walk into, doesn't it? So we just need to get a bit more great thinking. So how did your Auntie Christine get involved? Well, we've done lots of holidays together. Also, during lockdown, she lived with us uh, on and off under the sort of bubble rules. There we, there we are, hanging out of a car. And, uh, I mean, we've done all types of holiday. We've been to, we've done, like, glamorous, Disney, posh villa. We've done camping. I went glamping for my birth. My main holiday last year was glamping with Auntie Christine. Uh, we didn't think it through. Obviously, there aren't any loos in a, in a glamping hut, and she's like, I'm not going to in the night so she literally walked past everyone cooking their breakfast the next morning with a bucket going i'll just go sort this out love that was a, that was something to witness <laughs> did Slops she bucket each morning did she bring shanks's pony this is a phrase that russell <laughs> like you i was I've never heard it i was not aware of was she able to explain it any clearer to you I've never heard, there's so many phrases. I'm, I'm from Essex, as you may have detected. And uh, uh, I'm sort of married to a Northern girl from, from uh, Manchester. So I've had to learn loads of new phrases. They were getting out things like balm cakes, which they purchased down a ginnel. I mean, it's like they speak old English sometimes when I'm sat here for dinner trying to enjoy my sushi. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what about the, because I think initially the idea was to do this podcast with another comedian. And you said, no, 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 no. I've got someone far funnier are far more interesting to listen to. It's my auntie Christine. How does she feel about being flung into the world of show business? Do you, do you know what it is? That loads of comedians are really... Like, I don't have an on-stage persona. I'm just me plus a microphone. I've just monetized my personality to pay my mortgage. <laughs> and so, But you can't tell. Some comedians are quite quiet. So I like people that are, were just going to be normal. And I thought, what's more normal? than Auntie Christine. And I think, you know, post Gogglebox, people really like meeting real, real people. I mean, she's such a character. Last time we were on holiday, I took my dog as well, my pug, Colin. Christine was there, my wife. And Christine was cooking her dinner. And her, the meat content of her ham product was less than the dog food I was feeding. <laughs> it was 75% meat. She was like, look at this, it's nearly three quarters meat, this, Christine. I went, why are you eating it? She went, it's okay, I'm frying it first, love. 
that's where that it runs in the family, the funny bones, isn't it? Even if people don't always notice it. Um, you, uh, we've been talking about A levels mm. a lot this morning because it's the big, big A level opening day and confirmation of hires as well, and lots of people, parents, kids, feeling very nervous about what they might get. You did very well, didn't you, in your A levels, um, and. But actually, in the end, it was your personality that you monetized, mm. which forged mm. you forward. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to disagree with you there. I initially failed all my exams and was belched out of my comprehensive because the same education works for all, remember? So I, there I was. I had, no, I had nothing. My life was... Go I was a bit of a crossroads. I don't want to get the violin out this early, but I was definitely one of those council house kids. There was that way and there was that way, and it was time to decide. I was in a job I wasn't enjoying. I could have easily slipped into things I shouldn't have been doing. And at the last minute, when I was 21, I went to my local university and I said, what A-level would I have to get to get into that course I want to do English literature and turn my life around? And they said, you have to get an A. So that was the highest pressure results day ever. So I redid one A-level, sociology, of course, because I was already furious about how the accident <laughs> of my birth had dictated where I was socially. And I aced that A-level. I won an award from Betty Boothroyd. It was the highest grade. It's interesting listening to your debate. It's quite a lot of people who don't sound like me and who people watching your show will think they don't sound like telling us apprenticeships are very good for Terry, Dave and Lisa. You know, go into beauty, go into carpentry. It's very wholesome. You know, where are the leaders of these industries telling working class people that these things are good? It sometimes feels a little bit like middle class people who want their kids to go to university, trying to make the rest of us feel like we shouldn't go to Middlesex and South Hampton Polly after all and should be happy learning carpentry for a lot of us that come from very very working class or council house backgrounds like us sorry to break it to you but to say you went to uni it's like a pass into the middle classes there's people stood there with hummus and gallery entry tickets waving and the A-levels was a way of smashing that door down and getting that sense of self-worth whether or not I've actually used my English degree when I got that first in English which I did out went the chest, up went the confidence, and I felt like I could participate in any aspects of society. Doesn't mean you have to do it, but we should be very careful with the language we're using, which sort of tries to contain working class people going, it's okay, just go and do a trade. Trades are fantastic. So let's get carpenters, plumbers, and leaders of those associations showing us why apprenticeships are fantastic. Well, you're absolutely right. And, and very often, um, you know, it, it, it perpetuates and perpetuates, for instance, BTEC, which I sat uh, at an induction day um, when Darcy was about to go to secondary school, where the school she was at told us how amazing BTEC was and that all youngsters should consider doing it. Now they're scrapping them. And I think that's part of the problem, isn't it? That, that, that youngsters feel like universities have always been there. They've seen that people are successful in the past, have been to university. And, and it can be very patronising to say, go a different route. And, and, the and the money as well, uh, do people underestimate it. What annoys me when you hear this debate, there's this massive debt and the first thing someone says is, yes, but it's a loan. You don't, you don't pay it back to you're earning a certain amount. You have to put yourself in the position of the shoes of someone like me who's grown up to be terrified of any debt regardless of how it's repaid. That's my dad. You pay it back, you don't owe anyone anything and you die without a mortgage. That's how you're, you're raised from day yeah. dot. So you can tell us all day long, it's only £60,000 of debt, you'll soon pay it off once you're earning X pounds a year. There's an inbuilt cultural fear. Yeah. That's why you're seeing the social mobility gap widening um, because people ask, a lot of people are brought up to be uh, scared of debt. Right so that, so. That's, the other, that's the other issue um, you've got. But to, there are people do learn in different, we're talk, talking about A-level results, people learn in different ways. That's that's why this debate will never be resolved. People like me who love hiding in a study for six months then bursting out and showing off with a big show off exam. We excel at exams. Other people who are gentler souls and don't like the pressure of a three hour exam are better being um, assessed as they go. So the answer is obviously, as always, an answer in the middle and a combination of the two. I wish Britain overall could learn from that solution when we're trying to find... I oh, feel like I we need to, to get Russell you involved in the education policy <laughs> yes. that's going on for the government. They are looking for some <laughs> guidance and some direction. And actually, we're speaking to Governor Williamson a bit later on. What question would you ask him or what would, what would have helped you when you were wondering about which way to go in life and uh, facing some tough choices and staring at a, a worrying future? What would have helped you and what would you like him to do now? It's... <laughs> 
I don't mean to be pessimistic, but trying to fix the problem at 18 is too late. We need to start in primary, probably, and we need to rethink how secondary school skims off the bright without being divisive. I'm obviously not suggesting we dump people in a secondary modern bin like literally everyone in my family was. My mother-in-law, father-in-law, mum, dad, they all failed their 11+. plus. So I'm not backing that, but I think by the time we get to 18, a lot of people have been knocked about so much by the education system. We're losing talent at that point. It's not fair to assess people at 18 who have got extra resources. By that, I mean private tutors. And also people forget, you break up in June, you go back in September. We lead very different lives in those three months. It's not mums and dads' faults who have to work, but we can't swan around going to look at the new um, Van Gogh Alive exhibition in South Kensington because our mums and dads work hard all summer so we just play over the park so there's an attainment drop um, in the holidays as well during secondary school which could do with being locked at, looked at with youth club and summer school provision which would also go some way to tackling some of the youth crime and some of the other activities that people fall into into the holidays uh, lots of people getting in touch russell russell for prime minister bonnie says <laughs> loving russell on gmb everything well said he talks a lot of sense have you ever had that said to you russell as you were growing up in essex because i certainly didn't it's normally shouted by a drunk person in row C. Tickets available, <laughs> Russell Payne. <laughs> well, this morning well, it's Bonnie. We're happy Bonnie to be that for you this morning. Uh, great <laughs> to see you this morning, Russell. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Us.